So, Nintendo, huh? So, Nintendo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I Nintendo. Welcome to Great our start. our June oh, yeah. 18th. Is this June 18th? Yes, the June 18th, 2024 Nintendo Direct discussion. Um, today, we got Mystic Aiden. Hello. And Noah Hart. That's me. So, as we already knew, like, from a month ago... Nintendo announced their June 2024 Direct, which we typically get every year. Just starting off, just to kind of get a baseline from everyone. What is your, what was your initial thoughts after watching the Direct? How are you, how are we feeling? So, my initial thoughts were like, okay, a lot of things that really aren't, uh, how do I put this? It's not stuff that, like, I'm gonna pick up everything day one, oh man. A lot of stuff that's usually kind of games that, like, yeah, I'll just put on my list of things I'll buy when they go on sale around the holiday season. Or, like, yeah, as gifts or whatever. Like, I'll play it, but I'm not going to buy it myself, with a few notable exceptions. Not a bad direct, just not a lot that was specifically for me. Kind of in the same boat, because, like, there was, like, a, uh, a few announcements that I felt like were, like, okay and everything. But there was like one or two that I was even thinking like, I wouldn't really even want to play this if it was gifted to me, or I really want to buy this, because I think it'll be really good. Okay. I would say at least from my initial thoughts, I will. I came out really enjoying it. I went in with low expectations, mainly just because the Switch's successor is on its way. So going in, my expectations were low, but I was pleasantly surprised, I would say. Um, a lot of these announcements were not stuff I was expecting, and overall, I end up enjoying the Direct um, a lot more than I thought I would. But speaking of the Direct itself, we're going to go ahead and hop into the games. Starting with what kicked off the Direct, uh, Mario & Luigi Brothership. And I don't know about y'all, but I am a massive Mario & Luigi fan. I played um, Partners in Time, Superstar Saga, Bowser's Inside Story, Dream Team, not Paper Jam, we don't talk about Paper Jam, but all the other <laughs> games I played growing up, loved them to death, and here we are, basically nearly 10 years later after the last new entry, and we're getting a whole brand new game, which looks amazing. I am blown away by the way this game looks. It looks exactly how I would want a console Mario Luigi game to look, but my fanboying aside, I want to know, what do y'all think about this game? Noir, you want to take this one first? Yes, please. It's really funny because when you think about it, a game that just came out not even a month ago was a Mario RPG that runs at 30 frames per second. And then this brand new Mario and Luigi game runs at 60, which is mind blowing to me. They put so much effort into the animations and just like the gameplay in general. They, they went in hard with this project and it wasn't necessary at least for me, but the the amount of work that they did put in is like acknowledgeable and I think they did like a really good job on it. I would like to clarify, I am still bad at video games, but I was way worse at them when I was really little. <laughs> and as much as I love Bowser's Inside Story, I did not get far in it when I was really young. I okay. like Mario and Luigi. But it's more of a case of, I really hope that when I do get around to playing this, that I don't get horribly stuck again and end up dropping the game. Cause like, I, I like these games. This game in particular looks gorgeous, but I, I don't want to drop it midway through again, man. Like I said, I, this game, I was talking about it for, after the next several announcements. This, the fact that we it even happened still doesn't feel real to me, but I'm excited to see it coming. I think it was a great way to kick off this direct. I really don't have much more to say for, about it for now, except for I just want it in my hands. So going through some of the headlines we got, we had uh, Fairy Tale 2 get announced. We got Fantasia Neo okay. Dimension. Um, do we have any okay. thoughts on those two games? No. I do not have a thought in my head. Nope. Okay, <laughs> cool. We're going to keep on going. So to everyone's favorite game from 2022, Nintendo Switch Sports is getting a brand new update where you can shoot some hoops with your friends. Basketball is now coming to Switch Sports, I believe in the summertime is what they said. What the heck? Why is this here? Someone explain this to me. I have a theory. First of all, uh, you literally mentioned this, I think, but this game sold like hotcakes. Oh, yeah. So here's my guess. 
The only reason that this update even exists in the first place is because Nintendo probably had a bunch of new hires recently for the Switch 2, and they're like, hey, you need to get used to the Nintendo development pipeline. Uh, what's a game we can literally cram in a small game into, and nobody would care, but a few people would play it anyway because they yeah. already own it? And so that's kind of what Switch Sports is perfect for. You've already shown you can update in games. Like, they added in golf after launch for some godforsaken reason. Yeah. So it's probably a case of we have some spare time or we have new devs we need to train. Can you guys make this real quick just to get used to it? I can see that. That's not something I've people talk about, but I think it's an interesting take that I haven't thought about before. All right, so I want to talk about this oh. game because this looked cool. Um, Mio Memories in Orbit. I believe that's how you pronounce it. I saw the trailer. I was like... Wow, this game is gorgeous. I'm not getting anything else from this. Yeah, Wasn't this the one with the fast place gameplay? Kind of fast, but at the same time, the walk speed looked really slow. Yeah. I it, think that was it's just- It's hard to explain. Like the walk speed looked really slow. And then it cuts to a shot of the guy going like flippy dippy all around in the air. Like, sure? I think that was just for like that, the, the show off the graphics at the beginning. I don't think that's the walk speed because that would feel so janky. It was the the way I said it the, once we started seeing more of the action. I was like, oh, this is one of those games. The 2D side scroll or Metroid, even I don't know if it'd be a Metroidvania or not. Metroidvania. But kind oh, of that no. Metroidvania <laughs> gameplay. It probably will be Metroidvania. I, my immediate thought when I started seeing the combat was this kind of looks a little like Hollow Knight from a distance. Yeah, yeah. I thought the same thing. If that was on their list of games you want to be like. Oh, there's your Silk Song, everybody. <laughs> there's Silk Song. Yeah. Hey! Silk Song. Oh. Woo. Woo. All right. Silk Song. Um, let's see. Speaking of other stuff that actually was at the direct, Far Magica, which we got to see it's like Pikmin. a good bit. It's like Pikmin, and it kind of reminds me of Nino Cooney. As well. Oh, you're right. Pretty much, you get to raise a but your own army of little monsters and creatures, and then you can use them to fight. You can command them. You can have them combine to make even like bigger monster kaiju thing. Um, it looks adorable. It looks fun. It looks like it'd be a lot of chaos. I could definitely see the Pikmin vibes of like, oh no, all my buddies are dead. Look at the um, control scheme mm. they showed in the trailer where I saw the guy press the button and like, and it showed like a little cooldown, but then it showed all the monsters rush forward. I was like, this feels Pikmin. Yeah. Th that's what I saw. Man, I just thought of like vegetable Pokemon. I didn't know what was happening. <laughs> <laughs> all right, going on to the next game. We got honestly something I was not expecting. Was Donkey Country, Do Donkey Country? <laughs> Donkey Kong Country with Torrance Country. HD um, coming to the Switch. And I have thoughts. You have thoughts? Go for it, because I don't have any thoughts. Okay, I would like to clarify, I have not played this game before. I have, really? however, been following the uh, Nintendo theme park stuff or whatever. If you pay very close attention, well, you don't even have to pay very close attention to all, like all, of the trailers for the new Donkey Kong Land, which I wanted to get a picture in front of the DK door, but it was closed when I went there. So mm. here's the thing though, is that if you pay attention to the park, weirdly, everything is for Country Returns. Oh yeah. Like the back yeah. of it's got the temples from Country Returns, the tiki's are in the trailers for some godforsaken reason. Yeah. So the, my guess is the reason they're specifically remastering it is to put the what people think about Country Returns very conveniently near the launch of the theme park since it's opening in 2025. I'm pretty sure. My guess is that this is going to be a title they push out later this year to just fill a spot, but yeah. also very conveniently get these well, characters back in people's heads again. Yeah. yeah. Well, especially since it comes out January 16th of next year. Okay, <laughs> now, now we can talk about Dragon Quest. Dragon Quest 3. Yeah, Dragon Quest. Yeah, baby. So, I'm gonna, hey. from what I've heard, I think y'all know more about Dragon Quest than I do. So, I'm gonna kind of let y'all take this one. I know Dragon Quest more from like secondhand experiences than anything. Like, it's a series that I know exists. I understand why it's popular. Because it basically, you know how Final Fantasy is massive here in the West and Dragon Quest is a little bit like really niche? 
but like on the rise. Yeah, it's mm-hmm. the opposite. It Japan. is basically the opposite of Japan. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So literally in Osaka during my Japan trip, right across the street from me was a completely Dragon Quest themed convenience store. Like, I believe it. It's like, I believe it. Huh? For me, it's definitely a Black Friday game because I know for me, I've never played a Dragon Quest game. I'm interested in the series, especially since this is apparently the first game in the timeline. Along with them announcing HD 2Ds for 1 and 2. So, it looks like it's a great place to start off your adventure if you want to get into Dragon Quest. So, I might give it a try. Actually, yeah, since it's November 14th, it's like a week before Black Friday. So, might grab it then. But, that's kind of where I'm at with it. I'm excited that we'll get a remix of the original trilogy there. I think that's really cool. I don't really know how to feel about just... I haven't really been the biggest fan of the HD 2D games at all. And when it comes to Dragon Quest, I really... My experience with it is, um, in order, Mario Sports Mix, Ocean Street, <laughs> Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. <laughs> we just mentioned 2 Yay. HD. I think this looks amazing. I am super excited for this. This is a massive fan of Luigi's Mansion. This comes out next week. We didn't really learn much oh about God, the though. game because we already know everything about it, but it's coming. That's it was it really neat. even. I already own the 3DS version, so I'm not gonna bother with the Switch version. Same. Yeah. It, it's really weird because it's like, sure, the game comes out in like a week and everything, but like, why was it even in this direct to begin with? Like, there wasn't really anything notable to, to even like say. To and a... it's already been in a previous direct. Because it comes out next week. They. The wags are just a massive much, yeah. advertising yeah, yeah. thing. So it's like, hey, oh, yeah, we have a Mario. game next week. Please buy it. And that's, yeah, the trailer was only about a minute long. Or two yeah. minutes long. Yeah, uh, this, I... Whenever the, they have... Most of the times they'll line up a direct around a new game release. So like this, I know when we made... I made a bingo card on my stream. We're like, oh, we have to have Luigi's Mansion 2 on there. That's a guarantee win. I, I was in the same boat, like... I would just like play scare scraper with like random friends and I would even just like play it online <laughs> you know when it was still up no download play no buy I, that's my hope for the switch too. bring back download play I'm just throwing that out there that would I no I want street pass back that's what I want speaking of street pass actually speaking oh yeah actually the, so <laughs> so a very good segue oh okay okay chat. so before we start, I just want to say I have never heard of this before. Okay, so I have only heard of it by name. I have also never heard of this before, but it looks amazing. That's all I have to say. I, I I'm excited. The trailer faded in, and I thought it was Tomodachi Life. Me too. I thought oh, it. I no. thought it. I thought it was a new game in the Me series. Maybe not specifically Tomodachi Life, but I'm like Me's, and then it was like. Denpa man. I'm like, what the heck is this? I love it already. <laughs> I know a little bit about it. As far as I know, this game actually got a, a couple entries on 3DS, but a lot of them were eShop exclusive, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. So it's kind of a case where this is like a, hey, the 3DS eShop is dead. Let's very conveniently bring it back to Switch right now. A big update for Nintendo Switch Online, as he said, with us getting four new games, four honestly pretty big games being... The Link to the Past remake from the Game Boy Advance featuring Four Swords, Metroid Zero Mission, which is a remake of the first Metroid game, and then we got Perfect Dark and Torque coming to the N64 um, <laughs> expansion pass. Now the separate 17 plus app. That is true. We're getting um. So this is something that's actually been in Japan for a while. Japan had a mature 17 plus app that released a while ago because they actually have all three Torque games. In Japan already. I feel like we're kind of skipping over the real big highlight here, which is Four Swords. It's the GBA one, but it's Four Swords I'm, with the multiplayer online. That's I am awesome. so excited. Oh, it is multiplayer? I didn't know that. That's actually yeah, so I, The way Four Swords works is that it's like the multiplayer. You have Four Zelda Swords. Series, That's it. But you have mm-hmm. Four Swords, so it's four players. And because, you know, it's the GBA online app, everyone can connect. It's kind of like a why Kirby and the Amazing Mirror was such a big deal. It's not the Four Swords oh, GameCube insane. remake that I wanted from this direct, but I'll take what I could get. Us Four Swords fans are starving, so we take what we could get. Anyhow, 
Um, Switch Online content, always exciting to get more stuff on there. Okay, okay, go ahead and freak out, Mystic. Marvel, baby! It's Marvel, baby! Have either of you two touched Marvel vs. Capcom? No. No, but I'm really excited to finally try it. So, basically, Marvel is obviously a licensed property that's been bounced around between a lot of companies. But yeah. the first company it ever kind of Marvel latched onto was Capcom. Yeah. So, back in the day when Capcom would reuse the Street Fighter Alpha assets for everything, uh, so they made a bunch of, uh, they made an X-Men fighting game, then a Marvel superheroes fighting game, then they smashed up uh, the Marvel stuff and some of the X-Men stuff with Street Fighter Alpha. That's X-Men versus Street Fighter. Yeah. And then I think they changed up Marvel superheroes versus Street Fighter. Then what it is, they opened up Capcom to the whole Capcom roster, like Mega Man and all that. Yeah. So that's how you get Marvel versus Capcom 1. But the sequel, Marvel vs. Capcom 2, this game got stuck in licensing hell. There's no modern way to purchase MVC, and it's just here. It's actually real, and like, we've had more stuff released of this. Uh, we still don't know the release date, but we know it is rollback netcode. The netcode is actually gonna be good. That's I saw crazy. that. I thought the hitbox really? thing was cool. I did see that. The hitbox oh. thing is new. That's new. That was not, like a training mode. Was in the PS3 version. That also means this is a dedicated port. I'm pretty sure this is not an emulation. It's real. It's just straight up real, and I will be buying it day one. And I remember like I played um it on arcades before, so it'd be a nice thing to kind of just go back to and be like, oh, back in the day, I remember playing this game. I'm definitely excited for it. And I'm glad for the fans. Anyhow, uh. so going into the next game. That side does not fill me with happiness, but Super Mario Party Jamboree. I said this yes. during my reaction. I think this is going to be the best Mario Party of the day. I have a very good feeling about this game. I'm a little mixed because here's the specific detail. I would like to clarify. I am one of the very few people who like Super almost more than Superstars. Yes, like, thank just, you. Super's do. great. I love Super. I, I think Super is really good because it brought more to the table. Like, Superstars, it's it's okay, but it relies... Like, I know it's kind of the selling point, but it feels like it leans a little too much into feeling like the old stuff. My question is, uh, is the dice going to be relevant again? Is it going to be the same, um... Yeah. ...multi-sided die? It would be like, kind of cool. I also hope Hammer Bros back, because he's not in any of the from art, but we saw Ninji. We saw an NG. In, there was a few the characters we've seen who won in that little intro cinematic, so I think there will be more hidden characters. I'm sure Pauline will probably be one of them. I'm just so happy they finally made Toadette playable again. Yeah, wait, I just saw that. Toad and Toadette are pl My boy Toad is playable! My fiance and I have been like so mad for the longest time. <laughs> that both Toad and Toda are not playable in Super and Superstars. Those were our biggest negatives, were that those two specifically were not playable. I know. And that now that they're so both weird. playable here, it's th like, this is like our biggest plus. I am so excited. Like, you're, you're like, making a bigger push that. for Toadette recently. Like, like I said, I went to Super Nintendo World and Toadette is basically like a host for the Yoshi's Island ride. I will say, another <laughs> thing I want to touch upon this game is the the 20 player online mode with like it's like you're wasting through the mini games together i am so excited for that it screams with the viewers content which i love doing here on the channel and there's also over 100 mini games in this one which is a lot oh, most, that's sick. Most, i didn't know that yeah most mario parties typically have about 70 80. one of probably it's hard to say my favorite games there's so many great games that got announced here but the legend of zelda Echoes of Wisdom. This is such a weird game, and I kind of love it for being the weirdest <laughs> game. Does that make any sense? I'm just excited. Like, this... It feels like it has all the freedom of Tears of the Kingdom and Breath of the Wild, but put in the more legacy-style Zelda games. And you get to play as Zelda herself, which is just so cool. Which is awesome on its own. I will give the game massive props for just being a Zelda. 
with Zelda. You yeah. know what I mean? She is like only <laughs> playable in spinoffs and or non-canon games. Yeah, it's been very far and few. No, I'm very excited to see this. And I think it's from the looks of it, it's being developed by Grezzo, which are the people who did um Link's Link's Awakening. And then they also did uh, Ocarina of Time and Majora's Mask remakes back on the 3DS. Speaking of Grezzo, uh, this game's been in development for a long time. So I do hope it's not a development hell scenario, more of just a, we've just kind of been working on it. Well, I think time. since this you has been I mean? a brand new from the ground up game, Link's Awakening came out in 2019. So they've been working on it for four, we'll say like four years, but you got also throw in the COVID factor that kind of threw oh, a wrench, true. especially since from the ground up and how much they're showing us just in this first trailer of all this new stuff like, oh, you can get a bed and throw it around. You can jump on the bed and bounce. You can summon water pillars and swim up with them. I think it's very similar to Tears of the Kingdom where I know they said for that game, it was ready for a 2022 release. They could have released it, it would have been perfectly fine, but they just really wanted to refine it. So they delayed it a whole year so they can really refine that game. But it's something Nintendo does a lot. They did this with um, like Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door. That remake, they finished it a year ago. And they've just been sitting on it, waiting for the right time to release it. Nintendo does that a lot. Really? Yeah. They they will do I that. Didn't know that. Nintendo does that all the time. They did it with that. They did it with Metroid Prime Remaster. They did it with the new Super Mario Bros. U remake, um, 3D All Stars. I will say, I do have some worries about this. Because I feel like this game is going to be like, yeah, this is the best puzzle solving we've ever had in a Zelda game. But I'm going to make a hard call now. This game is not going to be getting any 10 out of 10s. It's probably going to hover around 7 to 8. My theory is because it's going to be because the combat's going to suck. Yeah. I, do, I don't like saying it like that, but the summoning, I think it's a fun gimmick. But the fact that you cannot directly assist, that's going to be a problem. I wonder yeah. if we're going to see more. If it is like that, then I can see that. But I I could see them having some basic attacks for Zelda, even as simple as like a fireball. Because she's had stuff like that in previous games. and Oh, uh, they might be items, you're right. Or items, or like they want to, like yes, it's better for you to, you know, use like spawn an enemy or do this. But it's also like, hey, it's like some enemies in Zelda. Yeah, you can just keep hitting it with a sword. But if you throw, have a bomb at it and it swallows the bomb, it kills it in one shot. It might be something kind of like that where they're like, use the new mechanics. But if you really just want to keep thwacking that enemy, I wouldn't be surprised if they had a little pity attack where you can, or a little staff she gets in this game. She oh, like I hit got, people with it. I got it, it. I got it, I got it. So, uh, I, look, uh, you know, I'm not the biggest Zelda guy, so I'm not familiar with every item in the series because <laughs> I play mostly Hyrule Warriors. But what I do know yeah. is the rod items. She's literally carrying around a wand. What if she could just change the wand into like the sand rod or the fire rod? I think that's possible. Just, just do that. <laughs> like I said, I think here they're just trying to show off the big new features that you're really going to be messing around with. And I think there will be more ways that you can do combat. Just we be... have four months till this game comes out. Yeah, There's like... Ample time. I'm sure if we do get a September Direct, because this game comes out at the end of September, well, it'll be like Luigi's Mansion 2 with this Direct, where, hey, the game comes out in a week or two from now, here's one more look at it. Um, and we'll probably right. get more of a deep yeah. dive. Um, I'm sure we'll get trailers from now to then, because I'm probably going to start advertising this game since it is four months out. I just think the uh, game looks cute. It's all right. I could play it. And that's pretty much it. I uh, my initial thought about the switch light thing, I was just like, "Oh, that's so cool!" But I'm not buying it. Uh, uh no, not with a switch you run around the corner. Because the thing is, I feel like it's not gonna sell. Corner. See, I think though that's why they're doing the light because it's a cheaper yeah. model you can get. So if you remember back in 2018, that's when they released the new 2DS XL. And if you look at the sales graphs for the 3DS, they sold more 3DSs in 2018 than 2017 because of that release. Here's the thing. The only other way we're getting any special edition is if something crazy happens with Pokemon Legends ZA. I can That'll see them. Oh, they'll, that's they'll true. They'll probably do a light with Z with Za. They'll probably do a light uh, with Za. Zygarde Switch Light. That I, I, I would yeah. I've almost caved on the last couple special edition consoles, but I keep telling myself, no. 
I don't need it. I don't need it. I don't need it. <laughs> yeah. But so next we got Ace of 20 Investigations Collection. Which, from what I've heard, these are the last two Ace of 20 games to come to Switch. Okay, so basically, the entire Ace Attorney series has been poured to Switch, except these two games, because they aren't visual novels. Well, they kind of are, but they're like visual novels with actual, you know, moving around the area. Yeah. So they mm -hmm. had to put up more work into porting them, and the second one didn't even get localized. No. So this is a case where... I it's uh, I was gonna touch upon it earlier in Luigi's Mansion too, but I saved it till now. Really like that. Um, we've been getting a lot of ports of dual screen games, even though if they're it's not the same. The fact they're condensing them down to be able to be on a single screen system, like the Switch, that's easily portable to other consoles. I love that. I'm not gonna pick this up until I get really invested in Ace Attorney. It's not really my thing. I I tried the first game and it gave it a genuine shot. I just appreciate that we're starting to do this now with a lot of DS and 3DS era games. Whenever we get a new game or an, an old game coming to the corn gen consoles, I'm always a big fan for it. We've seen this multiple times face of Tony, and now to get this, especially one that was Japanese exclusive, the Switch has games. Give us more games on Switch. I am not going to complain. <laughs> the Switch has games. It does. The Nintendo Switch has games. So I'm going to say we skip over just the Metroid Prime 4 because I don't have much to say. Yeah, I don't have anything Me neither. To yeah. No. I, I don't even have much to say about Metroid Prime 4. I'm, I'm gonna Strange. flood. I don't care. I feel so bad. It's like, it's a case where, I, I'll be, I really want to care, but like, okay, I mean, I just not invested in Metroid. It's like, I've given some of the games a shot. I haven't tried Metroid Prime yet. And this game, I will say, it looks gorgeous. No wonder it's been in development so long. But at the same time, it's like, cool, I guess. Why on the Switch? You're really gonna like delay it for like seven years until you finally show us something after you tease that the next console is like a thing that's happening soon? This like is why not be just save it for game. that? So I think this game will release exclusively for the Nintendo Switch early next year. We know that they said specifically that the Switch's successor will be revealed within the next physical financial year. Which now, the fact that they said that makes me believe we won't hear about the next console until next year in the last financial quarter. Joey, yeah. I'll be honest, I can see exactly the situation you're saying, but the last thing I want is for this game to suffer from Metopia Syndrome. Because Metopia on the 3DS released literally December 8th, 2016, exactly yeah. three months before the Switch came out. It had a very brief time in the sun, but I think a lot of casual people skipped on it because they were saving their money for new upcoming Switch games. Yeah. Like, why would you buy this game when in literally three months their Switch is going to come out? And that's probably the reason they ported it because the first game was really good. And yeah. they just it didn't sell as great. So it's a case where it's like, I think Prime 4, if they release it that close to the Switch, because even if we say, oh, the game comes out at like, February 2025. That's what I'm thinking. And then the Switch comes out literally like th Switch 2 comes out like three months later in summer or whatever or spring. I don't I think the Switch's like, successor is going to be holiday next year at this point. We're going to hear I about think it. Holiday I is think a bit we'll, of a stretch. I, I think, think we're going to hear about it in the spring right before the financial quarter closes up but it will not come out until may, maybe more like fall maybe like September or October. I, I think it simply comes down to me for they would not have announced it or not shown it off if it was going to be on the next system. So I... my my problem with like Metroid is that like I feel worried for like Metroid fans that have been waiting for this game for a very long time because I know that pain. I don't know if you guys have ever played it, but waiting for Bayonetta 3 was one of the most difficult times for me. Loved the first two so much, and then when three was finally announced and released, I played it and I was severely disappointed. And then, like, when I think about Metroid Prime 4, except that's worse because that's seven years. Mm -hmm. I, I feel like that's what we have to manage expectations. Sometimes games just take a long time to come out. I feel like that's definitely a thing when it comes down to porcelain to porcelain. There's also so many other games coming out. I'm not th constantly thinking about, okay, this is the next game in the series I'm dying for. Like Mario, for example, I'm I would love for the next 3D Mario game, 
but it's not constantly in my mind ever since Odyssey came out. I'm thinking about, you know, now we got Metro and Corby, and we've had all these other games that have came out since then. So, to me, this feels like the true proper reveal for Prime 4. Yes, they announced it back 2017 when Bandai Namco was working on it, then they stopped development, then we started development in 2019, but we haven't really heard anything from Prime until now. So I feel like now mm -hmm. is when that hype cycle really starts for the majority of people. Uh, and I guess at the end of the day, same thing goes to all these directs, hype responsibly. You know, I know I saw, saw some people say they were disappointed we didn't see the next big Mario game in this direct or see the Switch's successor. And it's like, that's not what this direct was meant to be. This direct yeah, was I just. I had to explain that to a guy in my chat. Yeah. He, this... just, he just did not get it. <laughs> yeah, and it was just as simple as this direct is focused on the main Switch. We're wrapping it up. And honestly, I, did, I thought we were going to get two new games, max. I did not think we were going to get Mario and Luigi. Mario Party, Metroid Prime 4, um, what else got announced? I know there's even more stuff, I'm just Donkey Kong. Donkey right. Kong. Yeah, I honestly, I thought we were going to get more stuff like that. Like, just like Donkey Kong, but like, that would have been like, half the announcements. Because the Switch is, the fourth Switch is winding down. Um, and that also kind of feeds to my theory of thinking the Switch's successor is further away than we think. Because I'm like, we're getting all of these brand new games that look outstanding and I'm like, why are they not holding this off for the next system? To play devil's advocate real quick, I would like to say if you notice the release dates, every single thing was 2025 except very specifically Donkey Kong Country, which I'm pretty sure was January and yeah. Metroid. I yeah. can literally see Metroid releasing in either February or March of 2025. Yeah. And then we if we get the Switch 2 trailer sometime in around, we'll say December to give it like a couple months out. And then it just drops in like March, like the first Switch. That just feels, it feels like they gave us everything for the rest of the year, so we don't need another regular Nintendo Direct. So you don't think we're going to get a September Direct? I think we're going to get a September Direct, but it's going to be like... Not the September Direct. I think they might push it back to like mid-October or something. Okay. And that's going to be what actually reveals the Switch 2. And, get, and my big theory is that one thing they're going to do is they're going to say like, here's some updates on some previous Switch games we announced with an asterisk. And it's also going to say, hey, some of these have Switch 2 enhancements. That's what I think the, the twist is for some of these games. Like, I think Metroid Prime... Or what we saw was running on the main Switch, but I think it might run better on Switch 2, and they'll be like, hey, here's some footage of it running better on Switch 2. So I think a lot yeah. of the games we're seeing right now are going to be like, hey, also consider checking these out even when the next console is on the way. Hmm. That's how I think it's going to be. This is the, hey, here's everything else. We'll catch you later in March. Anyhow, <laughs> let, let's, let's wrap it up here. Let us know what are your thoughts on the Nintendo Direct below in the comments section. Also check out the description, we'll have links to both of these guys' social pages down there. And thank you both, Noir and Mystic, so much for joining me. It's been fun. Thank you for invite. No yeah, problem. Awesome. Alright. Well, as always, thank you all so very much for watching. Bye. I hope you all enjoyed. As always, please take care of yourselves, drink some water, and I will see you all in the next one. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.